when far-right terrorists and traitors stormed the U.S. Capitol and took it over for a short period of time, it really showed to you how much the police are allowing right-wingers to get away with. Like, they were basically allowed to take selfies in the Senate, you know, just hang out, chill in the offices of various members of Congress, including Nancy Pelosi, and they all got to go home. Imagine that. Imagine being able to storm the Capitol, literally stage a coup, and then still be home in time for dinner. Could you imagine what would happen if Black Lives Matter tried to do this? Could you imagine what would happen? They would be lucky if they landed in jail because that means that they would have survived because they all would have been shot because we know that police in America treat Black Lives Matter activists and black people and even left-wing causes entirely different than they treat right-wingers. So in case you forgot, this is how Black Lives Matter activists were treated back in 2020. After the murder of George Floyd, when protests erupted across the country, this is how the cops treated them. Whoa, what the hell? Here, police officers starting to move some of the crowd out. <laughs> Or it looks like uh, something there is a confrontation. Come to the shot. Maybe Come to the shot. A, is that a looks taser? Like a taser? Yeah, it looks like a taser. You see police officers physically assaulting Black Lives Matter protesters. But you might think, well, you know what? That's just like in various cities. This is the capital. So capital police are different, right? They're going to be more lenient. Well, no, in actuality, if any police in the country is going to be a lot more stringent in the way that they deal with protests, you'd think that the capital would be the area where they take protests more seriously because this is our capital. They have to protect the capital, right? Uh, so if you'll recall back in 2017, I think it was, when uh, the Republican Party was proposing their repeal of the Affordable Care Act and they were proposing cuts to Medicaid, there were dozens of disabled activists that protested outside of Mitch McConnell's office. And can you guess what happened? Capitol Police did not clear a path for them to go through. Capitol Police didn't allow them to make their voices heard. Capitol Police arrested them. Some of them were literally dragged out off of their wheelchairs. Take a look. absolutely just stunning. You know, if those protesters wanted to stay and make their voices heard and remain outside of Mitch McConnell's office, now we know that all they needed to do was put on a MAGA hat and then they would have been allowed to stay by Capitol Police. Where was, um, where was this energy when they stormed the Capitol? Where was that energy? It's shocking. And a lot of folks who protested at the Capitol explain that Capitol Police they don't take any shit. Adi Barkin tweeted out, I was arrested by Capitol Police for sitting peacefully eight times. These rioters get escorted out to freedom? Alexis Goldstein writes, When protesters tried to take the Capitol steps during the Kavanaugh nomination, every single person was arrested. But yet, these folks got to go home. Trump and Republicans called on them to go home, and that was it. You have folks literally looting the Capitol building. I thought that the party of law and order was against rioters and looters. And they just get to go home. No jail time. Nothing. Where was this restraint during the Black Lives Matter protests? 
This is how right-wingers are allowed to act. Remember when armed thugs stormed the Capitol building in Michigan to protest the lockdown orders due to COVID-19? I mean, look at the restraint that police officers exercised as armed thugs screamed in their faces. And what we saw from the riots at the Capitol, I mean, they were, they were no different. There were clashes with pro-Trump terrorists and, you know, some were tear gassed, but for the most part, the individuals who literally tried to stage a coup of our government were not met with the ruthlessness that we saw during the Black Lives Matter protests. In fact, Capitol Police literally stood by as they watched far-right terrorists invade the Capitol building. Can you imagine how they would act if Black Lives Matter protesters would be doing that? I'd imagine they wouldn't be standing idly by. Now, if you're wondering why are they letting them just do that? Why are they standing there? Why aren't they doing anything? Well, this video from TikTok shows that they opened the gates for them. They welcomed them in. Police are squabbling with protesters. Oh, there we go. And it gets worse because one Capitol Police officer even took a selfie with one of these terrorists. So you invade the Capitol building and Capitol Police, rather than dragging you out as they did disabled protesters and peaceful protesters prior, they take selfies with you. Are they arrested? Are they uh, brutalized like Black Lives Matter protesters would be? Like, I'm not calling for them to be brutalized, right? Peaceful protesters, I don't care if you're right wing or left wing, you should not be brutalized. That's not what I'm advocating. But what I'm saying here is we have to acknowledge the double standard. How often do we see peaceful protesters advocating for good causes arrested when leaving the Capitol building? But when you have a literal coup attempt, well... They don't arrest you. They let you leave. And sometimes they might hold your hand and help you out quite literally, as we see from this video that was shared by Alexis Goldstein, literally being escorted out as she takes her time and he's helping her. This is someone who just was part of a coup attempt. And you see a Capitol Police officer in riot gear helping her. So the question is, why were Capitol Police showing so much restraint? Why were they behaving in a way uh, that's relatively respectful when Black Lives Matter protesters, they get beat up. They get maced, pepper sprayed, uh, brutalized. Why were Capitol Police allowing this to happen? Uh, well, as the New York Times reports, inside the Capitol, an officer pleaded with a man in a green backpack saying, you guys just need to go outside. When asked why they weren't expelling the protesters, the officer said, we've just got to let them do their thing now. That is amazing. So if you're a right winger, you could do anything. You could literally storm the US Capitol and stage a coup and you could just leave. They'll help you out. That is insane to me. When we just watched the video of Black Lives Matter protesters being sprayed from behind, getting pushed and kicked, but try to stage a coup, take over our government and our democratic regime. And we just got to let them do their thing. They're just mad guys. And it's not just the Capitol Police who I'm furious at right now. It's public officials. Uh, Ivanka Trump, before deleting this tweet, literally addressed them by calling them American patriots. And when Trump tweeted out a video where he addressed them, of course, he was kissing their asses too. I know you're pain. I know you're hurt. We love you. You're very special. Now, contrast what he said there with the way he spoke about the protesters after George Floyd was murdered. Quote, these thugs are dishonoring the memory of George Floyd, and I won't let that happen. Just spoke to Governor Tim Walls and told him that the military is with him all the way. Any difficulty, and we will assume control. But when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Thank you. Now, in his message to fascists, he didn't threaten to bring in the military or forcefully remove them. He asked them politely to go home. And if you're wondering why we have this double standard... Well, I think that's pretty obvious. We live in a white supremacist country where white outrage is always justified under every single circumstance, but black outrage is never justified. You're protesting and rioting over the death of a black American at the hands of the state, completely unjustified. 
But if you're wanting to steal democracy away because you believe some idiotic reality television show star that this election was rigged, well, that's fine because you're white. Your anger is justified. Your intentions are pure. But outrage over black deaths? Never justifiable. You should stop looting and rioting. There's no amount of pain that would justify that kind of behavior. It's just astonishing. Like, this double standard should piss every single person off. And, you know, the reason why we have this double standard is because in a lot of instances, I'm generalizing, but in a lot of instances, if you ask a cop, nine times out of ten, they're going to say they're a Republican or a Trump supporter. Not all of them, but the overwhelming majority of them. And that's a really big problem. The fact that law enforcement in America is a uh, right wing and we have a right wing party who is authoritarian, that is a really big problem. Now, Capitol Police, you know, it's not like they're not capable of getting this crowd under control, because if you'll remember last summer, they used chemical weapons against peaceful protesters. I don't know if that was Capitol Police and National Guard. I don't know what the case was, but they used chemical weapons, tear gas against peaceful protesters, and they did this all so Donald Trump could take a photo op. So make no mistake about it. The only reason why this happened is because Capitol Police let it happen. A privilege that would never, ever be afforded to Black Lives Matter protesters. Black people would never be allowed to behave this way at our nation's capital. And as journalist Garrett Graff puts it, I can't get over how thoroughly the Capitol Police, one of the nation's largest and best-funded police forces, failed today. Their utter abdication of their most basic role, hold control and secure the Capitol building, endangered every person inside, from the vice president down. To be clear, this was a total strategic failure by Capitol Police, not a tactical one. This wasn't like a couple protesters slipped in a side door that was accidentally unlocked. Rioters stormed up the main Capitol steps and waltzed in, and then, just as appallingly, waltzed out. Now, Bill Kibben responded to this, saying, having been routinely arrested by them at a completely peaceful, utterly non-threatening pre-announced protest with a 93-year-old woman, I can testify that they're capable of acting like jerks when they want to. So, in other words, it happened because... They let it happen. So this is extremely like demoralizing and depressing to see. Uh, I just don't know how, as a country, we move forward. You can't work with a party and a base that is completely delusional and violent. Being delusional in and of itself is an issue. But being violent and delusional, that is a very dangerous very dangerous combination and that's what we saw take place and it's not going to go away with donald trump i'm worried that this is going to take place at state capitals across the country um at the inauguration and uh you know the fbi has been warning about far-right violence for years now but it's been swept under the rug uh so maybe it's time that they actually pay attention because lawmakers were in danger today lawmakers were in danger so if they don't take this seriously and start paying attention to far-right violence in this country and far-right terrorism, when will they? You could support The Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>